Good evening. Uh, we present the news summary. The next presidential and national assembly elections will be held on the 27th of uh, September 2025 if the national assembly gives its approval. Vice President Ahmed Afif made the, made the announcement uh, this morning while briefing the press on, on the decision sorry, taken by the cabinet in its weekly meeting yesterday. This was amongst various other decisions taken. Vice President Ahmed Afif said that the government has approved the 11th Amendment to the Constitution to set a fixed date for the elections as recommended by the Cabinet. The amendment suggests that the new date for elections next year is moved five weeks prior to the date of the last elections in 2020, which was the 25th of October. The amendment also gives the Vice President the power to continue the term of the president in the event that he or she is incapacitated or dies, and if the remainder of the term is more than two-thirds, it will be counted as a full term for the one occupying the position. And in the event that the president resigns or is removed from office for gross violation of the Constitution, in that case there will be fresh elections. In the event that the president resigns, under the amendment being proposed, he will not be allowed to stand again at the next election. It doesn't disallow him from standing at future elections. But to avoid speculation on his part, it prevents him from resigning and immediately appealing for a fresh mandate. The amendment being proposed also suggests that legal action can be taken against the president any time after the end of his term in office. For the moment, the president can be indicted only during the first three years after the end of his term. Vice President Afif said that this is to ensure transparency and accountability. What is also being proposed is a change in the title of the designated minister who will be referred to as the principal minister should the National Assembly approve the amendments. Mr. Afif explained that this is more appropriate as the country now has a vice president, which was not the case before when the title of designated minister was introduced. The Electoral Commission has found that the termination of uh, membership of the party leader of the Seychelles National Alliance Party, SNAP, was valid. The Electoral Commission has given uh, its final decision after it had received two separate requests from SNAP to effect changes in the executive committee and in the party leadership. The Seychelles National Alliance Party, SNAP, was officially registered as a political party on the 22nd of November last year. And now the Electoral Commission has had to take a decision on the office bearers of this party after it had received two separate and contradictory requests to effect changes in the Executive Committee of SNAP as per Section 11 of the Political Parties Act. In a press communique, the Electoral Commission has indicated that it met yesterday, the 15th of May, in an extraordinary meeting to take a decision on those requests based on a legal analysis of the various letters received in line with the Constitution of SNAP and the Political Parties Act. And the Commission has ruled that the due process established under the party's constitution concerning removal of membership was adhered to and that the termination of membership of the party leader is valid. However, the Commission has indicated that the process to appoint members to new positions as party leader and for other office bearers was not in line with the constitution of SNAP. SNAP has been given seven days to inform the Commission of the new composition of its executive members and party leader. Georges Roubaix has uh, sworn in as the new ombudsman and the outgoing ombudsman, Nicole Tiran Girardi, is now the deputy chairperson of the Human Rights Commission. Roger Toussaint and Barbara Kaouli Sandré will continue as commission, commissioners, whilst Elna Etienne Kumar is a new commissioner at the Human Rights Commission. 
Three commissioners from the Commission of Information also received their legal instruments. Montaz Hassan as Chief Information Commissioner and Peter Lalande along with Egbert Rosali as commissioners. The Social Affairs Department organized a symposium today to discuss the most pressing issues impacting the social work profession. Social workers from all 26 districts participated in the symposium. The Minister for Employment and Social Affairs, Patricia Franco, emphasized on the importance the sessions will have for social workers in the country. The sessions of this symposium have been chosen so that they focus on some of the needs as they exist today in the country, whether it be in the care of our aging population or dealing with the effects of substance abuse and dependency, child abuse, amongst others. The sessions will look also at what can be done at a practical level to improve the training and preparation of our social workers so that they are well equipped and confident to do the work that they do, as this will ultimately raise service delivery standards. The symposium is a great opportunity for all of you social workers to make your voices heard and to contribute to the improvement of the services that are being delivered. The sessions will allow you to reflect on how best to strengthen the structures that support the delivery of social services and how to make them more effective. And here, I wish to emphatically say to you, we will listen and you will be heard. Negotiations between Seychelles and Madagascar have begun to establish the maritime boundary between the two countries. While the negotiations are taking place, the Department of the Blue Economy is undertaking capacity building exercises to ensure that more professionals can continue negotiations in the future. In this regard, a three-day workshop was organized earlier this week with the support of the Commonwealth Secretariat. Local and foreign experts shared their knowledge on the legal, economic, political and geographic aspects that needs to be considered in the negotiations. So the UN Convention on Law of the Sea actually spells out what the country's maritime jurisdiction is and it spells out what a country can do within its ocean space. So the importance of the boundaries is that you're, once you're able to establish what those boundaries are, then you're able to more effectively utilize the space. You need to know where the boundaries are so you can know what you have within those boundaries. You've already completed most of the boundaries, so the idea is once you've finished, you will know where the, the full extent of the boundaries are, and so you are better able to utilize, conserve um, the, the resources within that space. And to celebrate International Family Day, which was yesterday, the 15th of May, the Ministry of Family, Youth and Sports organized a forum to discuss needs of the modern family. The forum was held at the Grand Tons District Administration this morning. Four speakers presented the services available to support families and the elderly, importance of exercise for health and well-being, as well as the changes in family structures and the needs of modern families. Minister Marie-Céline Zialo said that they hope to organize a national family conference in the future to sensitize more people on the needs of modern families. And this was a new summary. More news at 8 p.m.